Understanding job protections when taking leave can be complicated and confusing. Job protections fall under two separate laws in New Jersey, the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act, or FMLA, and the New Jersey Family Leave Act, or NJFLA. Both of these laws are separate from the eligibility for New Jersey's paid leave benefits. I'll go into more details on that in the next slide, but first, it's important to note that it's unlawful for an employer to retaliate against a worker for taking or seeking to take their paid leave benefits. Retaliation can include being fired, reducing salary, changing workplace responsibilities, demotion, and more. If retaliation occurs, workers can speak with their employer, contact the New Jersey or U.S. Department of Labor's, or take private legal action. Also, it's important to take notes and keep documentation about issues experienced in the workplace. Again, the two laws that may cover workers' jobs and provide job protection while they are on leave in New Jersey are the FMLA and the New Jersey Family Leave Act. The FMLA is a federal law that provides up to 12 weeks of job protected leave every 12 month period. The FMLA covers leave for the birth of a child or placement of a child with the employee for adoption or foster care, the care for a child, spouse, or parent who has a serious health condition, or a serious health condition that makes the employee unable to work, and reasons related to a family member's service in the military. The New Jersey Family Leave Act, or NJFLA, protects workers' jobs up to 12 weeks every 24-month period. The NJFLA covers leave related to caring for a child. This includes bonding, foster, and adoption. And also if the child's school or place of care is closed during a public health emergency. It includes taking leave to care for a loved one with a serious health condition. And in the NJFLA, a loved one can be anyone who is the equivalent of family, not just a blood relative. In terms of eligibility coverage, the FMLA covers workers who have worked at their employer for at least 12 months, worked at least 1,250 hours in those 12 months, and worked with an employer with at least 50 employees within 75 miles. The FMLA is a federal worker protection law, and the U.S. Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division is responsible for administering and enforcing the law. The NJFLA covers workers who have worked for their employer for at least 12 months, worked at least 1,000 hours in those 12 months, and an employer with at least 30 employees or is a government entity regardless of size. The NJFLA is a state job protection law and the New Jersey Attorney General's Division of Civil Rights is responsor responsible for administering and enforcing the law. NJSAFE, or the Security and Financial Empowerment Act, provides 20 days in a 12-month period of job protection to address circumstances resulting from domestic violence or a sexually violent offense. To be eligible, the employee must have worked 1,000 hours in the last 12 months and work for an employee, employer with at least 25 or more employees. You can learn about these laws at the various links that we provide. For more information regarding the New Jersey Family Leave Act, the New Jersey Attorney General's Division of Civil Rights has much information online. We recommend there are five things you should know about job protected family leave handout. Points three and four of this handout are often quite informative for workers and employers alike who are often unaware of the official interpretation of the law. These sections of the handout contain important information regarding the sequencing of job protected leave, which can be especially important for the birthing parent or mother, or someone who takes leave first for their own health needs and then takes leave for caregiving or bonding needs. These workers, their leave may be covered by both the FMLA and the New Jersey Family Leave Act for job protection. Because the NJFLA leave is not the same as FMLA leave when taking leave for your own serious medical condition under the FMLA, First, the NJFLA leave will not be used up. Therefore, the work worker may be entitled to take up to 12 weeks of FMLA leave for their own health condition and then 12 weeks of NJFLA leave to care or bond for a loved one in a single 12-month period. For example, if someone is pregnant or just had a baby, they can take up to 12 weeks for pregnancy and recovery from childbirth under the FMLA the period of time is really certified by the medical care provider and may not be for the full 12 weeks. But after that, they can then take an additional 12 weeks of NJFLA leave to bond with a new child. And this is really after the doctor certifies the recovery period is over or someone may have exhausted their FMLA leave already, whichever is earlier. 
Any parent may take leave under the NJFLA to bond or care for a newborn or a child, place for adoption or foster care. In conclusion, job protections when taking leave and paid leave wage replacement benefits can be very confusing. This graphic attempts to explain the separate eligibility criteria under these separate parts of taking leave. The details for wage replacement here are specific for 2024, and they do adjust every year. But to be eligible for paid leave wage replacement in New Jersey, workers just must meet minimum earnings at any covered employer in the base year period before they take leave. The size of their employer and the duration of their employment is not a factor for paid leave eligibility. Employers also do not approve state leave, state leave paid benefits, right? So I did cover eligibility for job protections, but remember, they are different depending on what law you look at, but generally they rely on how many employees an employer has, how long you've worked at the job, and how many hours you've earned. These laws are obligations that the employer has to return a worker to their position or a similar position. There are exemptions and specific details that may apply to you or to someone taking leave, and it's always a good idea to research and read more, but this provides you with an overview of this distinction between wage replacement and job protections.